bag of word models that we discussed earlier suffer from a problem that they do not capture information about the word's meaning or context. Words are treated as atomic units. There's no notion of similarity between words as they are presented as indices in the vocabulary. One of the major disadvantages of using bag of words is that it discards word order, ignoring the context. For example, the approach cannot capture simple relationship, such as determining that the words car and bus both refer to vehicle and often discussed in the context of transportation. Words are coded as one hot encoded vector for each of these words in vocabulary, and each word occupies one of the dimensions and has nothing to do with the rest, no projection along the other dimensions. Next comes the idea of generating distributed representations. A word should preserve some dependence on the other words. For example, the words in the context of the specific word should get a greater share of this dependence. These dependencies can be captured when word vectors are represented as multidimensional continuous floating point numbers, where semantically similar words are mapped to proximate points in geometric space. Look at the left panel. It shows you vectors for three word pairs illustrated the gender relation. Right panel shows how multiple relations can be embedded for a single word, and here we have singular, plural relation and gender relation. The vector space representation can capture syntactic, singular, plural, and semantic irregularities. Word to Vec is one of such models, and it was developed in 2013 by Thomas Mikolov at Google as the response to making the neural network based training of the embedding more efficient, and since then it has become the de facto standard for developing pre trained word embeddings. Word to Vec is based on distributional hypothesis where the context for each word is in its nearby words. The goal is to generate vector representation of words that carry semantic meaning for further NLP tasks. For example, classification and the transformation from words to vectors is known as a word embedding. Word to Vec introduced the following two different learning models to learn word embeddings. Continuous bag of words on the left, skip cram on the right. Continuous bag of words learn the embedding by predicting the current word based on its context. The continuous skip gram model learns by predicting the surrounding words given the current word. The major difference between these two methods is that SIBO is using context to predict a target word, while skip gram is using a word to predict a target context. And continuous bag of words is typically faster and has slightly better accuracy for more frequent words, while skip gram works well with a small amount of data and represent well rare words and phrases. Each word vector is typically represented by several hundred dimensions, and each unique word in a corpus is assigned a vector in the space. The reason for the transformation from words to vectors is so that machine learning algorithm can perform linear algebra operation on number in vectors instead of words. Let's discuss continue bag of word method. In this method, we predict the current target word, which is our central word, based on the source context words, surrounding words. Consider simple sentence. Natural language processing and machine learning is fun. We have pairs of context window and target word where if we consider context window of size 2, we'll have example such as natural processing and language. Thus, the model tries to predict target word based on the context window words. If you look at the right, you'll see the context window define number of words on the left and on the right of the our target word, centered word. Let's look at the right representation of our small sentence, row number 2, we have vocabulary of four words, and language is our target word. It's defined as one. Because the word to vec family of models is unsupervised, you can just give a corpus without additional labels or information, and it can construct dense word embedding from the corpus. Recall that bag of word is known for its sparse word matrices. Word embedding allows you to have 
a dense representation. This week we're going to be introduced to CARES, which is Deep Learning Framework for Python. CARES enables fast experimentation, runs on top of other framework, and was written by Francois Cholet. We're going to use this workflow with CARES to demonstrate how to use additional feature extraction models besides what we've learned, TF, IDF, and word frequency. The typical workflow represents several steps. Preprocess corpus, build a corpus vocabulary, build a context target generator, build a continuous bag of word model architecture, train model, and get word embeddings that you will be using as a weights instead of, for example, TF-IDF. The first step, preprocessing corpus, depends on use case scenario and typically involves steps such as removing stop words, punctuation, conversion to lowercase, and it actually depends on your use case. Next, we're going to build our corpus vocabulary, where we extract each unique word from vocabulary and map unique numeric identifier to word. We're going to use method from CARES feed on text. This method creates the vocabulary index based on word frequency. It is word index dictionary, so every word gets a unique integer value. And zero typically reserved for padding. So lower integer means more frequent word, for example. The pad term is typically used to pad context words to a fixed length if needed. And the input is zero padded so that the width and height of output is the same as the input. So here you can see that we created a vocabulary of unique words and way to map a word to its unique identifier on the left and identifier to its unique words on the right. Now we need to generate pairs that consist of target center word and surrounding context words. In our implementation, a target word is of length 1, and the surrounding context is of length 2 multiplied by window size, where we take window size word before and after the target word in our corpus. So our window size is 2, and context length will be window size multiplied by 2, which is 4. When we print our results, you notice the X form is our context words, and we're trying to predict the target centered word why based on that context now we're going to create a sequential model the length of the vocabulary is specified by vocabulary length parameter we have our input context words of dimension 2 multiplied by window size this is our input length parameter the output dimension of each word vector will be 100 the dimension typically ranges from 100 to 30 depending on vocabulary size. Dimension size beyond 300 tends to have diminishing benefit. We're going to pass these parameters to an embedding layer of size vocabulary size multiplied by embedding size, which will give us dense word embedding for each of these context words. And each word will have dimension 1 multiplied by embedded size. Next, we're going to use a lambda layer to average these embeddings and get an average dense embedding, which is 1 multiplied by embedding size. The averages will be sent now to the dense softmax layer, which outputs the most likely target word. We compare this with the actual target word, compute the loss, backpropagate the errors to adjust the weights, which will be done in embedding layer, and repeat the process for all context and target. Let's review a bit a terminology. Epoch is a hyperparameter which is defined before training a model. One epoch is when an entire data set is passed both forward and backward through the neural network only once. One epoch is too big to feed the computer at once, so we divide it in several smaller batches. And a batch is the total number of training examples present in a single batch. An iteration is the number of batches needed to complete one epoch. For example, we have a data set of 2000 training examples. We're going to divide this data set into 500 batches, and then we need four iterations to complete one epoch. When we train our corpus, our goal is to adjust weights to reduce a loss function. Once the model is trained, similar words should have similar weights based on the embedding layer, 
and we will just take its hidden layer weights, which are the rows of the hidden layer matrix, and those are actually word vectors or embeddings. To get word embeddings for our entire vocabulary, we can extract them from our embedding layer. Get weights method return the weights of the layer as a list of NumPy arrays, and in this case we have three arrays. So we'll need to extract only the first array. The first array has dimension of 100 and vocabulary size, which is 2424, uh, based on the corpus we're using. And each word has a dense embedding size. Let's try and find out some contextually similar words for specific words of interest based on these embeddings. For this, we need to build a pairwise distance matrix among all the words in our vocabulary based on the dense embedding vectors. And then we'll find out the nearest neighbors of each word of interest based on the shortest Euclidean distance. Recall when we ran our training model, we used only two epochs, so the results may not be as accurate as if we ran multiple epoch for training. So now look at the results. Some of them make sense contextually. Alice, Queen, Rabbit. And training for more epochs actually provide a better results. Now we need to visualize this word embeddings using t-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding. It is a popular dimensionality reduction technique used to visualize higher dimension spaces in lower dimension, as we'd like to know how similar words are. Let's look at the figure. The circles and figure show different words of contextual similarity positioned near each other in a vector space. We may notice there are some similarity groups formed, for instance, rabbit white, Alice, queen. So now we can use those weights for other NLP tasks. So the goal of word to vec is to generate vector representation of words that carry semantic meaning for further NLP tasks. So now in addition to frequency-based methods such as bag of words, TFIDF, you'll be able to use word to vec model, which provide distributed representation.